Shalom, grace and peace, Shalom, thank you for tuning in to the Wake Up Show, son's with me today, and not my son from the loins, but that bright thing out there, how's everybody doing today on the Sabbath day, hope you guys are enjoying the Feast of Tabernacles, ooh, let me stop shaking the table, alright, so, first and foremost, before we get started, like to thank the Most High, like to thank the Father in the mighty name of Jesus <clears throat> for waking us all up, preparing us for uh, his Sabbath day, and for this wake up show, and for all the knowledge and wisdom that he has uh, given to me to pass on. Not bragging on myself, decreasing myself to increase him. All right? Uh, please like and share the video, start watch parties. This is a, I hope you guys watched part one in order to understand a lot of part two, all right? So, let's get started. And before I get started, let me say this too. All the videos in this lesson, I do not own the copyrights. I've, I'll put a disclaimer up. <clears throat> I'm going to say the disclaimer now that all of everything that I'm using is not for profit it is only for educational purposes only. That's it. Everything we're about to watch is for educational purposes only. It's not for profit. And I'm saying the disclaimer. And for parents, if I remember, I will let you know when there's a particular video that has uh, what we consider confiled language in it and some violence okay so if you don't want the kiddies to watch or hear you might want to cut it off and you watch it yourself but when we get to that video hopefully I remember I will remind you to uh, the kids really don't need to hear and watch the video but the video got to be shown in order to get the point across so now that we said all that let's uh, let's open up with opening verses <coughs> and of course my allergies want to keep up. Well, I tell you, early this morning when I woke up, it was bad, then it stopped, and as soon as I get ready to get started, it started up again. Let's go to Isaiah 28. So we're going to read three, three verses before we get started with the lesson. Isaiah 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who is the he that is the Lord? And he's teaching who his knowledge and whom shall he make understand the doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. This is the nation of Israel. Yeah, that's some mess with me. This is the nation of Israel 
that he's teaching because in Exodus 19, he said that he wanted us to be his priests, the kingdom of priests, which means the priests have a job to do. They can't just be priests amongst each other. They can help sharpen each other's sword, but they got to go out to the rest of the world and be priests for God. <coughs> With pre for a precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So, when we're learning from the Lord and when we're teaching, it's precept on precept. Again, you can walk, you can read this book from the beginning to the end, but as you go through, you may see something here that goes with this precept, and now you're getting a different, you're getting another message from the Lord. All right, the Lord is the one that's smarter than everybody, not us. <clears throat> Verse 11, we're stammering lips in another tongue while he's speaking to this people. So he's specifically talking about the nation of Israel, but he's saying, I'm going to teach you line upon line, here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, in other languages. It's not just going to be in Hebrew alone, and that's it. So family, if you have someone who keeps telling you you're not going to understand nothing unless you understand the Hebrew, God is not a vain God. He's not going to put people in the fire because they never understood Hebrew. All right? Some Hebrews will never even know that they're Hebrew, but they know what they're doing according to this book. Okay? Let's go to Isaiah 8. Let's go to Isaiah 8. So he's teaching us. Now, how are we supposed to teach now that we have the knowledge that we have? Isaiah 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So if no one's reading you the whole volume of the book, Genesis to Revelation, there's no light in them. If they're only teaching out of the Old Testament or they're only to knock only and they're not using the New Testament, which is the faith of Jesus or the testimony according to this, there's no light in them. Same thing if someone says, ah, I'm just a New Testament Christian, and I don't even have the Old Testament. All we have is just the New Testament. There's no light in them either. You must have Genesis to Malachi and Matthew to Revelation. Let's go to the next one, and let's see who eventually had this and will get into the kingdom when it comes to earth at its proper time. Appointed time, I'm sorry. Revelation 14 and verse 12. Here are the patience of the saints. Now, people are always claiming that they're saints. You know, there's preachers that say, Ah, oh, saints, let's stand up. And What did the saints do to get into the kingdom of God? When it comes to earth at its appointed time, they hear of they that keep the commandments of God. So they keep the law. The book is plain about this. This is why I don't understand what people say. You don't have to keep that law no more. They keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So you got to have the law and the testimony. Again, there's a balance. And what is the faith of Jesus? He's telling you to keep the law too. And plus he added a little bit more things to it to tighten it all up. But this is what you need to do if you want to become a saint. Keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. It's that simple. It's that plain. Let's go to Matthew 5. And let's open up this lesson, Matthew 5. We're going to start just like we did with the first uh, video, the first lesson, in Christ's first, people like to call it Sermon on the Mount. We're going to go to what he said in the beginning. All right? So, let me cut, turn this around. All right. So, again, welcome to the Wake Up Show. All the videos in this lesson. 
I do not own the copyright to the music, to the to anything when it comes to the videos that we're gonna show. All of uh no no not all of one of the videos is gonna have foul language in it, so parental guidance is suggested. Now let's get to this video. I mean get to this lesson. The title of this is If They Hate and You Hate, What Sets You Apart? So if, in the first one, again, part one, you got to go back and read, watch the video. I don't want to do a review. We're just going to get started with this. So, <clears throat> hold on one second. All right. So Matthew 5, and we're going to start reading at verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall ye be salted? For it is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot hide. Oh, I'm sorry, cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on the candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So you want your light to shine when the rest of the world is going through the wide gate. You want your light to shine to help start lighting up other men to shine. But you continue to keep heading for the straight gate. We're not going to do what the rest of the world does, right? We don't want to do that. Why don't we want to do that? Because we're going to start following the rest of the world. Let's go to Ezekiel 33. Again, if they hate and you hate, what sets you apart? So if the whole world is hating, you're just as dead as the rest of those light bulbs you see right there. You're not shining before men by yourself. In for God's glory, not for your glory, for God's glory. Let's go to Ezekiel 33 and read verse 10. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we live then? Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? This also, this also applies to the other nations as well. The Lord has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. The Lord wants everyone to repent. That's his whole mission from the beginning. And that's why he wanted Israel to go out and teach the same thing. Go out and teach the world to repent from their evil ways as well. Let's watch this video. When you pull your weapon at night and you fire, why did you fire? This 
is the woman who went into the wrong apartment, shot a man that she thought was in her apartment, and killed the man. So many people came down on her for her actions. Her actions was wrong. She got convicted for doing the wrong thing. But what do I see her doing? I'm going to back this up one more time. And I want y'all to tell me what you hear her say. When you pull your weapon at night and you fire, why did you fire? continuously hear this woman say I'm sorry from the time I started this video she's apologizing for what she did let's keep watching Let me also add, in the court, if you can't hear what the judge and the other attorneys are saying, they want her to just make a statement. That's it. They don't want to hear the I'm sorry. But that's what she keeps saying. In her testimony, she keeps saying, I'm sorry. But a lot of people in Israel didn't want, oh, this heifer, oh, this chick, she ain't even sorrowful for what she did. It looked like it to me. And again, I'm not taking up for what she did wrong. This whole lesson is about if they hate and you hate, what makes you different from them? And it's mainly about forgiveness. And what is she doing? She's asking for forgiveness for those that said she ain't even asked for forgiveness. Let's keep watching. she asked God for forgiveness too? People, we got to stop looking and judging on what we see and go by the scriptures. Regardless if you think she's crying or not or faking, she's asking for forgiveness. God didn't tell us, oh, well, only forgive him if, if this happens or if that happens or if... 
She's asking for forgiveness. Let's keep going. I feel like I don't deserve the chance to be with my family and friends. <laughs> I wish he was the one with the gun and that killed me. I never wanted to take an innocent person's life. I am so sorry. This is not about hate. It's about being scared that night. Is this thing? Amen. Amen, Sister Latoya. I'm going to say whom or hun. We have done far worse than to our Lord and really didn't deserve his forgiveness. We've done far worse. Let's go to Matthew 18, verse 21. Matthew 18, we're going to start reading at verse 21. For where two, oh, I'm sorry. Then Peter, then came Peter unto him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? <coughs> Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until 70 times seven. Are you going to count that many times? How many times you done forgave somebody? No, you're not. Jesus really put an unlimited number on it. Should, should Christ and, and the Father forgive you seven times until seven? Hey, let's keep reading. Verse 23, Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which would, would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought, when he began to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents, for, but for as much as he had not pay, had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me. I'm going to put it back on here. Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant the one that just the, the servant that just asked his master to forgive a debt so him and his children and his wife wouldn't be sold as slaves, and then he still got to pay the debt. He went and asked for forgiveness. And, and his master forgave him. Start at verse 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants. So now he went out and found a co-worker with him which owed him a hundred pence. So this dude owed him less than what he owed his master. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, pay me that thou owest. That, boy, does that sound like Israel. Does that sound like us? Sound like it to me. Took him by the throat <coughs> and said, pay me, man. Where my money, man? Verse 29. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. He did the same thing that that servant did with his boss. 30. And he would not, but when he had cast him into prison, till he should pay the debt. So he didn't have the same compassion for his co-worker that his boss had for him. So when the fellow servants saw that was done, they were very sorry and came and told their Lord all that was done. The other co-workers saw this and they went and told the boss what he did. Verse 32, then his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt. Because thou desirest me. 
I forgave you for what you owed me because you asked me to. Verse 33, shouldest not thou have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth, he was upset, he was angry, and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. If you can't forgive, you cannot get forgiven. And this whole thing was between this man and this woman. Israel is the one that decided to make it all about Israel. Everyone keeps saying, should we forgive? Should we? This ain't got nothing to do with you, Israel. This is between this brother and this woman. Has nothing to do with you. This was something to be shown for you to get a lesson out of. But that's not what Israel does. Oh, what do we do? We got to have our opinions. We leave the book and have our opinions. This I'm going to show the video again. This woman asked for forgiveness. I'm going to show it again. When you pull your weapon at night and you fire, why did you fire? Still saying I'm sorry. Thank you. 
question. Now she said this is not about hate. This is about her being scared. Yes, people, I know about the text messages that came out. Her racist text messages. But we're going to read something after this video is done. Actually, we're going to watch this first, okay? So let's watch the brother. No, nah, let's read. Let's read. Let's read. Go to 2 Samuel. Go to 2 Samuel 12. It's not a lot of scriptures. So we're going to read it. Because sometimes I don't care how evil a person is. Remember we read earlier where the Lord said he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. So maybe she was doing all types of wicked stuff before this. But then God came in and judged her. Also judged somebody else. And now she has to live with this for the rest of her life. Let's go to 2 Samuel because our one of our kings did the same thing. There's a reason why the Lord gave us this book to always remember some things so we could have compassion to Israel. 2 Samuel verse 7. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. For those that don't know this story, David had was the, the very, really, <laughs> I ain't going to say it because people going to be asking me where. I, David was a king in Israel and he was right out. He was after God's own heart righteous but even david slipped up and did some things what did he do at first he saw somebody else's wife and he committed adultery with her and then when the when bathsheba got pregnant he plotted to kill her husband and had him killed this is israel all right, so let's read what the judgment came down to, which changed David. Verse 7, and Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anoint thee king over Israel and de delivered thee out of the hands of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives unto thy bosom. And he and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. He's saying, if I've gave I've given you everything. And if that was too little for you, I would have given you more. I would have given you more than what I've already given you. This is what God is saying. Verse 9. Wherefore, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. What, what's that in the Bible? What's that in the, in the law? Thou shalt not kill. This wasn't a defense thing. He straight up murdered Uriah the Hittite. And has taken his wife to be thy wife. Oh, committed adultery? This is what David did and has slain him with the sword with the children of Ammon. This is what David did in all his power. Sometimes people get power. Sometimes people get positions at, at jobs or at churches and they get egos and they get big headed. And sometimes the Lord got to do something to take them down to humble them like he did David. Skip down to verse 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord has also put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. You mean to tell me David was supposed to die for what he did? David didn't even ask for forgiveness. But the Lord forgave him. Because the Lord knew all I got to do. Okay, David did this. I'm going to put it down on him. That baby that Bathsheba was carrying ended up dying and not David. And then the Lord told him, for the rest, your house, your house is going to have... <laughs> 
I'm almost about to cuss. I'm sorry. I'm getting into it too much, y'all. All right. Your house is going to go through hell. Your generations, your descendants, because of what you did. And that's the same thing that happened with Amber Geiger. She may have been racist beforehand, but the Lord done put her down, gave her a sentence. She still got to serve years. Now, however the justice system is, that ain't what I'm talking about. But she's sitting there saying, I'm sorry. Now let's look at the response. I'm not going to say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't going to ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. Now you know why I believe this, brother? Because if y'all been keeping up with this whole story, his brother was actually a minister, worship leader, whatever. So this is how I kind of know this brother's telling the truth about what his brother would do. And obviously, if he was in the church, even though it may be the wrong church, they still teaching forgiveness. And that's what this brother is doing. But no, what does Israel got to say? Look at this spectacle. Look at these these buffoons and these coons up here. Do y'all understand this whole thing was probably a test for you? Ooh, I'm getting there again. Do y'all understand that this whole thing was probably a test for Israel? And every idle word shall be judged. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. Now this woman shot his brother. But what does Israel want to do? This racist cop, oh, blah, blah, blah. But the brother's like, no. I forgive you. And before y'all get to saying some other stuff, let's watch the next video when it comes up. <laughs> so if you haven't seen this video right here, you're going to see it now. This is an interview on Good Morning America. Now you're not going to hear the questions, but you're going to hear his answer. All right? Because obviously they were not in New York. They were doing this long distance interview. So we're not going to hear the questions, but I just really want you to hear this brother's response to why he did what he did. Um... I knew that I just told her that I forgave her and with usual instances the words only they don't they mean something but I, I felt like that wasn't enough and that was just my gesture that my decision of saying my decision to make that my decision of letting her know that I truly forgive her this wasn't the decision of Israel the brothers that's his brother. And he's saying, I chose. The words were not enough. The brother got up and showed some actions. Oh, but not Israel. No, we got to jump on social media and clown the brother. Clown everybody in, that was involved. When this brother was doing it for a reason. And that was just my way. No one else's way. My decision. Just my way of letting her know that she is truly forgiven. We don't know if she may commit suicide in the future. We don't know what's going to happen. I just feel like I have to make, I have to get that point across to her. Yeah, 
I honestly think he was for it. No, no, nothing else. Kind words. I can't. I can't. I can't say. Just like each and every one has steps to get towards actually forgiving. Mm. I probably went through those faster than other people. Mm. Some people went through it faster than me. Um, if you are trying to forgive her, understand that she is a human being. She still deserves love. She made a mistake that she probably truly forget, um, regrets. So... If you want to forgive her, just understand that God forgive you, forgave you. And Ooh. I know Ooh. that every time I ask God for forgiveness, he forgives me. So who am I to not forgive someone who asked? I waited one year to hear I'm sorry, and I'm grateful for that. And it's, you know, that's why I forgive her. No, bruh. Come on, I. No, you Israel. You supposed to be mad like your brothers and sisters. Who all assume she never asked for forgiveness. You mean to tell me you waited a whole year for this? And then when you finally saw it, you forgave her? You actually did what the books say to do, bro? Come on, man. You ain't Israel. You a coon. You a sellout. To the wicked people you are. Y'all listen closely. This is what you have to do to set yourself free. You know. Hmm. I didn't really plan on um, living the rest of my life. You know, hating this woman. I know that there's something called peace of mind and that's the, that's the type of stuff you need to do to have peace of mind that is why I wake up happy in the morning that is why I want to live happy later on in my life and I I agree with this message a hundred percent do you want to get up every day angry about somebody he said he he said he waited a year. He he got the, the 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 I'm sorry. He forgave her. He did it for him. Cause he didn't want to wake up every day angry at this person. The rest of it, she'd be in jail. What did we talk about in part one about grudges? Let's say she got ten years and this dude didn't forgive her in front of her, and he's at the crib plotting when she gets out in ten years to kill her. This is why you can't hold a grudge. He says he wants to be happy. So he forgave her. Somebody doing the book. Everybody else ain't. Yeah, yeah there are. And, you know, there's mixed emotions within the family itself. Um, as Brent explained it to me this morning, it really it really hit home for me. He he wanted not only to forgive her in words, but he wanted to wanted her to believe him. So just saying it, she may not be convinced. So he asked to show, to give a physical display of that forgiveness, so that she would be free, and so that he could authentically be free. Now everyone in that family is hurting desperately because they love both Michelle, uh, and they won't be able to get past that hurt. If they can't forgive their killer, uh, his killer. Oh, wow. So now the lawyer, the same one. They're saying, they're, everybody's saying the same thing. And they probably don't even know that they're Israel. And they probably don't keep the commandments. But they showing the fruits of the spirit, aren't they? Come on, Israel. Y'all got all this knowledge. Where is y'all fruit of the spirit? They believe that. I believe that. And so it was an important first step. And I, I mean, 
it was I'm I'm ex exceptionally proud of him and he taught me something in that moment. We believe in, in the legal system. We believe in, in the, the, the domain of the jurors. Um, we hoped, uh, we agreed with the district attorney that it should have been on the upper end of the spectrum, that the sentence should have been closer to 28 years than 10 years. That would be, that would be closer to justice, but that is a, a whole separate conversation from the spiritual release of forgiveness. The lawyer said these are two different things. Now, everybody's upset because she didn't get 28 years. She only got 10. I wonder why. What does the book say? Let's do a detour real quick. Levitic, Leviticus 27. I mean, 26. We're just going to read one verse. Leviticus 26. Why did she only get 10 years? But if it was somebody black or someone Israel, why would they get the the whole 20 year, 28 years and not 10 years like she was sentenced. Leviticus 26 we are going to read let me see where verse 17 and I will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies and they that hate you shall reign over you and ye shall flee when none pursueth and if ye will not for yet all this hearken unto me then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. This is why when it comes to sentencing in this country that I know of, Israel gets it more than anybody else. So that's why she got 10 years and not 25. And he's saying justice should have been 28. But if you know the book, that's what she's supposed to get. But he also said the forgiveness part and the judging are two different things. She's still getting her punishment. But she's getting she's gotten forgiveness. She has gotten forgiveness for what she did, whether she's racist or not. She's still getting the same sentence that she got according to the law of the land. <clears throat> but the brother forgave her. And y'all heard why he said he forgave her. This had nothing to do with the whole nation of Israel and the whole police department. God is showing who he is by letting y'all see this stuff. Then sit back and see what everybody's reaction is going to be. And me personally, I was so shocked at those that know this book that call themselves Israel and the comments that they made. I mean, I'm talking about teachers, mores, priests. I'm like, what? Come on, you, you know this book. But let's keep going. So that was his forgiveness, right? Let's, let's, let's listen to the testimony of the judge of why she did what she did in the courtroom. Well, I'm sure for you all who were watching it online, mm -hmm. you just generally saw the back of Miss Geiger. Right. And from time to time, a side glance. Um, but at the start of trial on September 23rd, she was very stoic. Mm -hmm. um, she seemed to have found um, a point in space to fixate on and she just seemed to stare straight ahead at that and she sat very still and after the verdict of guilt she was visibly shaken and I think it took her quite some time to regain her composure but after that verdict she was a different person she was a broken person I saw a remarkable young man who came to the stand and I did not expect I don't know what I thought he was going to say but I did not imagine that that was his forgiveness his outreach to her um, his telling her that he only wanted the best for her 
I did not expect that. There was a lot of crying. Um, I have not had one where defense counsel and prosecutors are crying, mm -hmm. as well as the defendant's family and the victim's family. And yes, I was crying. It's not unusual for me to cry. I cry almost all the time. Wait a minute, is the judge hugging the mother? The judge is holding the mother? Wait a minute, why wasn't this shown in the media? See people, sometimes y'all gotta be careful what you watching on the media and, ju and, and jump into conclusions. Because when everybody saw her hu hugging uh, Mac uh, MacGyver, Giver, all types of memes went up. They put that one meme, what was that, when she's hugging her, they took her face off and they put Samuel L. Jackson character on there. Stop following the world, Israel. Stop following the world, Israel, because the Lord is seeing who's going to turn around and start following the rest of the world, even within Israel. And I think it was cathartic for everybody because uh, the attorneys fought hard. It was a horrific circumstance. And I think Brent John gave us an example. Yes, he did. That the person is more than just the act, the horrific act that they've committed. That's the first time I had someone who was going into custody to serve a prison sentence ask me for a hug. I'm very cognizant of the sheriff's policies concerning contact with an accused and I was thinking about that but I was also thinking about this woman is really really hurting and Brant Jean has given her a measure of hope and for whatever reason she's expect asking me for the same compassion and who am I to deny her? Let's watch another video of the same judge. Now some of y'all probably saw this floating around on Facebook. You gave her the Bible. I know that there's an organization right now. They have filed, it's an atheist organization and they have filed a formal complaint uh, saying it was unethical for you to hand her that Bible. What is your response to that? Well, it's not as though I said, Miss Geiger, you need a Bible. Um, but but when you give someone a Bible, it is seen. It, it is a religious. At, it was at gesture. her request. It was at her request. What she said to me after I said, please forgive yourself so that you can live a purposeful life. And she said, do you think my life can still have purpose? And I said, absolutely, it can. And she asked me, she said, do you think God will forgive me? And I said, absolutely, he will. And then she said, but I don't even have a Bible. I don't own a Bible. I don't know where to begin. And in that moment, I didn't want to lose Amber Geiger. And so I said, hold on, I'll get you a Bible. She didn't want to lose Amber Geiger by saying, well, that's your problem, and be on her way. So this woman went and got her own Bible. And I left the courtroom and went to my chambers and retrieved my Bible. But does it get confusing when a judge behaves that way in that you were there for the law, not no, for religion? I was not there for the law. My legal duties had been concluded. No defendant presents themselves as one single act. The sum total of their life is presented. And Interesting you say that because now the sum total of your years as a judge, people are now looking at that one moment mm -hmm. and judging you. Mm -hmm. And I know you've seen the comments. I know you've seen the video. Actually, I have not. You've not seen the comments. No. Well, I won't read them to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that. But uh, some of them have been brutal. They are brutal. Um, My family's concerned, but I'm not. What is your family's concern? They've read the comments. I have not. For your safety? Yes. But um, 
my faith is strong. If God brings me to it, he'll bring me through it. Hallelujah. And this is one of the reasons why I'm discussing the hug, so that people will understand the sum total of what happened. Ms. Geiger asked about forgiveness. Ms. Geiger asked if I would hug her. I don't think any human being would have refused her. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of Israelites that have been like, oh, you racist skank. I would not hug you. You killed a black man. But there were none of us in that courtroom. Only they were. At that moment. Um, you're such a strong hug. <laughs> Before you go, I do want to ask you about the bailiff and explain to us what happened there. So much of this, you have the answers to far more. I do. That. What happened in that moment? So Ms. Geiger had been found guilty of murder and I had held her bond insufficient, which means she was not free to move about. She was in the custody of the sheriff's department. However, we were on a lunch break and I couldn't send her to the jail to be frisk. So we asked a female bailiff to stay with her throughout the lunch break. And if you know anything about the jail, you got to search every part of a person, including their hair, because we have people smuggle contraband and weapons in all manner of ways. She was searching her so, hair. So, yes, she was accused of stroking her hair, but actually what she's looking for is contraband or weapons. And they do that to every female. So if you come to the Dallas County Jail, <laughs> they're going to remove your... This is why we do this show. This moment went viral. This woman was mocked on social media. People said things about her. They referred they to her horrible. that were horrible. Yes. There were people who said, look at her, a black woman being a manny. They, they assaulted her on social media, and she was doing her job. And this is exactly why your show is so important, because we have to educate the public. Judge Kemp, thank you so much for joining me today. You traveled from our good home state of Texas. I know it's always hard to leave Texas. And it's just because <laughs> you're from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. So, the whole world jumped on this woman. And a lot of Israel jumped on her with the rest of the world. So, the meme that was put up about him hugging her, the judge hugging her, and the bailiff going through her hair was not what everybody assumed it was. Let's go to Proverbs 18 and read one verse, 13. Proverbs 18 and 13. <laughs> he that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. I'm going to read this again for the people in the front row. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and a shame unto him unto him why because now that the truth is coming out some of y'all need to go back to your your timeline and erase a lot of stuff y'all put up because God had, was watching the whole time some of y'all that made some videos need to go back and erase it because God was watching the whole time Sometimes y'all better be careful what you say. Every idle word, even if you type in it, will be held, held against you in the court of, the, of God. 
Now, for those that had a problem with this whole situation, all oh, the forgiveness, she didn't ask for forgiveness, and that was a coon thing that he did and the judge did, and let's watch some other courtroom stuff that happened, too. They left him lying in the street in the gutter. What was the address of your emergency? In Thomasville. Somebody looked like they'd been shot in the head. Laying on the ground. People around because they heard a gunshot. time killed this woman's son and what is she doing in the courtroom why wasn't all this on social media she's hugging and forgiving this guy i don't hate you i can't hate you it's not our way Showing Rahma mercy, that is our way. And you were a baby, and you are still a child. His death was already ordained. Maybe the purpose is to save your life, because you're not going to be killed by this society. My family would like very much to be a part of your seeing a better way of life so that this does not repeat itself because I will always be a part of your life any life that you take is not just one life it is all that is connected to that life and what we want for them is not revenge revenge solves nothing it will not bring back my son You can only see how to help them when you have forgiven truly from your heart. Why wasn't this, why didn't this go viral? That's right, Brother Tony Asaf. It's race baiting. And if you're a true servant of God, especially among the circumcision, you aren't you should not be falling into this. The media is going to show what it wants to show to get Israel, whether they know they Israel or not, to respond a certain way. And God's sitting back letting it happen and watching everybody's comments and reactions. I sat back on this. I had this stuff prepared two weeks ago or last week. No, no, two weeks ago. That's right. But I said, I'm going to sit back and watch everybody and let everybody keep saying what they got to say. And then I'm going to come out with it. <coughs> Stop following the world, Israel. Let's watch another one. We got another brother here who killed another brother. And let's see what happened in the courtroom. Today, a man guilty of the murder of a 50-year-old mother in 2017 and the 2018 homicide of a 17-year-old boy was told by a judge that he'll never leave prison alive. But before he was taken away, he had to hear the heartbreaking statement of the mother of the teen that he killed. 24 Hour News 8's Barton Dieters was in court. He has this story tonight. Barton. O'Brien today, Vincente Rodriguez Ortiz remained apparently unmoved by the statements of the family of the woman for whose homicide he entered a plea. But that all changed when he faced the mother of the teen he was convicted of killing. 
Rodriguez Ortez was already charged with domestic violence against 50-year-old Lori Lundeberg in March of 2017 before he shot her in the head, according to police. But he would not be arrested for that crime until January 2018, when he was arrested for the shooting death of 17-year-old Andre Hawkins. Police said he made statements while questioned about the Hawkins slaying that provided evidence in the murder of Lundeberg. Today, before the judge handed down the life sentence, he had to hear from the mother of the teen he allegedly killed in a jealous rage. The grace displayed in her words stunned those gathered in the Kent County Circuit Courtroom. In order to get through this process, I had to forgive you, and I have forgiven you from the bottom of my heart. I pray for you because as a mother, you're a child to me, and in my heart, I have no anger or bitterness toward you. As a mom, I just want to hug you because I know that there's something that's not connected that made you feel so angry. I just want to say I'm sorry, Ms. Hawkins. What? Did we have another I'm sorry and another forgiveness? Or in this case, is the way it's being shown to us, was there forgiveness first and then the brother turned around and said, I'm sorry? I need y'all to go back and read about David again in 2 Samuel. In 12, sometimes it takes something so drastic to happen to some people for them to change. But why, why isn't this all over the media? Why isn't this all over the media? Why is it just when a white cop kills a black person, it's all over the media? But not if it's black on black. I don't see Black Lives Matter for this. Because it, it's still race baiting. Whether you want to believe it or not. And then whatever actions you do is being recorded. And God's going to deal with you on that day. Let's keep re watching. Rodriguez Ortiz did not apologize to the Lundeberg family. His attorney told me that there are appealable issues in the murder conviction, and if appeals court overturns that conviction, he could withdraw the plea. But those are long odds, and a life sentence is the more likely outcome. In studio control, Barton Dieters, 24-hour News 8. Let's go to this one. Here's another courtroom. Let's look. Can y'all see who the races is? Not the racist, but the two different races in this one. Let's watch. An emotional courtroom as the victim's father took the stand, his impact statement offering a lesson in forgiveness. I blame the devil, the devil, who misguided you and misleading you to do such a horrible crime. No, I don't blame you. I'm not angry at you at all. Relford was sentenced to 31 years for his role in the killing of Salahuddin Jitmood. Officials say Relford came up with a plan to rob the pizza delivery driver. Jitmood was stabbed to death at an apartment on Trent Circle in April of 2015. I forgive you on behalf of Salahuddin and his mother. On the act of involving to kill the victim, I forgive you. And I forgive you. The judge, also overcome with emotion, called for a recess, only to return to another heartfelt statement, this time from the suspect himself. This doesn't matter. What I thank you for There was only uncontrollable sobbing as Ralford and Jitmood's father embraced one another, proving that sometimes kindness does prevail. Covering the news in Lexington, Lindsay Piercy. LEX 18 News. You know what I noticed about these two videos? The first one with the Muslim woman and now this Muslim man. They got more compassion and forgiveness for people that don't believe their faith than Israel does. And that is a shame. They love their God so much, but Israel can't show the same thing. I see why the Lord said we are a stubborn and stiff-necked generation. I see why. Let's look at some more forgiveness. On a Bob Norman investigation of a so-called youthful offender facing a controversial 60-year prison term for violating his probation. But as Bob Norman reports today, the judge who headed out the harsh sentence had a dramatic change of heart. 
I really want y'all to pay attention to this video. Please stop typing, listen, and watch this video. Another chance. That's what 23-year-old Herbert Smith wanted today from Judge Matthew Destry <coughs> to reconsider his 60-year prison sentence for violating probation. Wow, 60 years for violating probation. Now, ain't that what the Lord said? I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Let's keep watching. 47 more years than even the prosecutor had asked for, prompting a petition that gathered 20,000 supporters for Smith. So the prosecution asked for a number of years, and the judge gave him 47 more years beyond that. Let's keep watching. He's a burglar. He's a robber. There's tremendous amounts of evidence supporting it. The prosecutor pointed out that Destry had given Smith a break three years ago when he sentenced him to just two years in prison as a youthful offender on convictions of home burglaries and a strong arm robbery. But after serving his time, Smith failed to comply with nearly all the terms of his probation, culminating in the October suspended driving arrest in a car with a convicted felon, a box of bullets, and suspected stolen goods. I'm here to say that 60 years just does not seem fair and reasonable. Pastor Alan Jackson, who has never met Smith, protested the sentence and promised that if the judge gave him that chance, his church would mentor him. I have been trying to save you, Herbert Smith, for the past three years. Clearly, you're, you're, you were still out there leading the thug life. Then he mentioned the pastor. Good people, they want to find you a job, Herbert Smith. They want to keep you out of trouble and away from bad influences. Then Destry dropped the bombshell. I have decided to suspend your sentence at six years. De what? What did this judge just say? Hold on, y'all. Y'all can't see me drinking, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Here comes my tea. It's tea time. What did the judge just do? Hold on. I got to sip my tea. Hold on. What did this white judge just do? He just wiped away the entire 60 years. He just suspended it. Dude's supposed to be, for everything he did, which was against the law of God, and he keep breaking the law, this white judge took away the 60 years that he handed him. Estre gave Smith that chance, along with 15 more years probation. I'm a, I'm a Mr. Back. Smith, to suspend, suspend your sentence. They want to keep you out of trouble and away from bad influences. Then Destry dropped the bombshell. I have decided to suspend your sentence at six years. Destry gave Smith that chance, along with 15 more years probation. Mr. Smith, you have become a symbol of a young man at a crossroads. Which path will you choose? You might say that Herbert Smith got the best Christmas gift he could ever imagine today, but Judge Destry was very clear. If he goes off that path, he's going back to prison for 60 years. In Fort Lauderdale, I'm Bob Norman, Local 10 News. It's lucky day, no doubt about it. The pastor, Alan Jackson, promised the judge he would help make sure Smith complied with the court orders. And if Smith did not, he would let the court know. You mean to tell me? This dude been causing havoc in the hood. He keep coming in front of the same judge. The judge gave him 60 years. And now he back again. He was on probation. And he back again. And the judge said, I'm going to wipe away your whole slate clean. Man, does that sound like baptism? Just wipe away everything. But if you mess up again, them 60 years coming back. Why wasn't this shown as far as, as being viral? Why didn't the media show this all over social media? We, they only going to show white cops killing black people because it's, a, it's base rating. Rate, base, race baiting, yeah. But if you keep your mind in the book, you will not fall for it. But some people that claim they're keeping their mind in the book, hell, they're instigating. There's Israelites out here instigating, putting up other videos of 
somebody else did something to a black man and why isn't he getting forgiven and, wh and how come we don't forgive this one and forget is this person going to get forgiven like I said with the Amber Gaga thing that had nothing to do with all Israel got to forgive her it was all about that boy forgiving her for him not for y'all let's look at some more forgiveness I saw that he was taking something and going to a corner of the store. Coming back, there was nothing in his hands. I rewinded the video and I saw that he is putting something in his pocket. First of all, I was upset, I was angry because if somebody is stealing, it basically, it feels like he's taking money from my pocket. If you are stealing from the store, you are stealing from my pocket. Why are, you, why are you doing this? He said, I'm hungry. I'm stealing it for myself and my younger brother. When he said, I'm hungry, the whole thing changed. The whole perception changed. This is not a regular shoplifter. A regular shoplifting incident. It is something different. I said, if you're hungry, I'll give you food. Don't try to steal these candies and gums and junk items. You're not going to fulfill your hunger with that. That's useless. So I thought, okay, he did something wrong. At least give him another chance. Maybe he will do it right next time. Show him what is right, what is wrong. And I hope he loves that. If he goes to jail, what is he going to learn? Nothing. He will learn all bad things in jail. And uh, that will become a permanent record. It's always important to help kids. I think they are the future of the country. If we try and we do something, if it is able to make some change, that's what we are there. <coughs> so this dude had somebody enter into his, had, had a young Israelite male enter into his store stealing. He caught him. Why are you stealing? Because I'm hungry. So the dude gave him food. He even told him, why are you stealing candy? That ain't going to fill you up. It sure ain't going to fill you up. So he gave him some food. What's that? Compassion, right? That's what it looked like to me. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be forgiving. If they hate and we hate, how are we set apart? And these people believe in other gods. What about Israel? Let's look at Israel forgiving someone too. Now I talked about this several times in some of my videos. This, I forgot when this was. Was it 2016 or 15? I forgot. But... This is a this is a racist uh, neo Nazi and an Israelite. Let's watch. Why you don't like me? Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Yeah, yeah. Give me a hug. You don't like me. Hug me. Hug me. Hug me. Hug me. Give me a hug.
I just thought it's really important for a person with um, privilege, I'm white, I'm straight, to come out here and denounce all hatred and bigotry and to show these people who advocate for ethnic cleansing and who are anti-gay that um, there's no hate tolerated in our community and that we will fight against them and show them that we're united. I mean, I respect their right to free speech, obviously because of the First Amendment, but I think it's important to demonstrate that we don't tolerate that type of rhetoric. So what happened with this right here is that there was a Nazi rally. Protesters against the Nazis came out. This white dude came out and decided to go against the protesters on his own. And he asked this dude, why you don't like me, dog? And you couldn't hear it, but the dude said, I don't know. See, sometimes, again, people do something. They're br they could be brought up being a racist. And God will do something to change their mind, and they will change. But Israel, will you give that person a, a chance to change? Or will you stay the same and not forgive other people? But that's what this brother did. Let's watch this part again. This brother's like, man, give me a hug, man. Come on, man. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Should make a track out of that. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. No? Okay. Let's go to the next video. Here's another brother who goes straight to the KKK. Let's watch. set out to convert anybody. In my quest, some of them ended up converting themselves. So this brother is actually going to the KKK. Most Israelites would watch this and say, this dude Oh, I can't remember his name. Oh, I can't remember that character's name on uh, a Boondocks that was black and was racist against black people. I forgot his name. Anybody remember his name? Type it up there. But most people would look at this and be like that. This dude part of and this dude is actually doing the opposite. People keep judging the book. What was that Proverbs again? He that judges the matter before he hear it, it is folly unto them. But these people are demonstrating the kingdom while Israel sits back with all the knowledge of God and condemns everybody. That's what Israel do.
Let's watch something else that happened. You know what? Before we do that, let me read these verses. See, I got caught up in these videos. I forgot to read these verses. Let's go to Colossians 3 and verse 12. Colossians 3, we're going to start at verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercy, mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. That's right. His name Uncle Ruckus. Right. So we're supposed to be forgiving folks as Christ is forgiving us. No matter what they do, because we've done far worse to Christ than people are doing to us, except the killing part. But that's a part of the curses. And we'll probably get to that a little bit later. Verse 14. And above all things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness put on the bond of charity which is love verse 15 and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to to the which also ye are called in one body and be ye thankful let the Lord Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns in spiritual songs mm. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all the same, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Let's go to First Peter. We're supposed to be doing these things, but no... We, we get too caught up in social media, the TV, whatever. And they draw us back to our old self. And then the brothers and sisters who point out stuff like I'm doing get talked about. Because they're trying to show, hey, we, we really shouldn't be doing this. First Peter 4, let's start at verse 1. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, <coughs> that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. What did we re read earlier? The will of God. Forgive one another. That's what we read. But the lust of the flesh is saying, no, these people are brutal. I hate them all. But Christ ain't doing that about you. He got problems with all of Israel. But he trying to let Israel sort it out. Before that judgment come. Verse 3. For in times past our life may suffer, su uh, suffice us to have wrought with the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness. Lust. Excess of wine. Revelings. Banquetings. And abominable adulteries. When they think it strange. That ye run not with them to the same access of riot, speaking evil of you, even within Israel. Because we learned the way of the Gentiles. And so now within Israel, we doing the same thing. And then when Israelites start waking up, realizing, well, I'm supposed to be walking this way. Other Israelites do the same thing. Speak evil of you. The Lord is separating folks, and I don't even think people know it. Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live to, the, to God in the spirit. But in the end of all things that is at hand, be therefore sober, that means sound minded, and watch unto prayer, and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins 
Use hospitality to one another without grudging. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as, as good towards the, manif the manifold grace of God. Let's get to this next video. My main concern really wasn't me. It was my client. I mean, I got these guys coming at me with AR-15. I, I, I mean, I'm actually seeing this here. My first thought was to throw my hands up and let them know, hey, I'm no threat to you. None whatsoever. My client is no threat to you. None whatsoever. I made it so clear to these officers. I made it clear. I mean, I mean I'm at the, the height of my lungs to where I, I was hoarse when I got finished. You know, it got to the point to where I just gave up because it wasn't nothing else that I could do. You know, I don't know if everybody, if you've seen the um, the um, the part when I had my hands up and my head was up and I was talking to my client. And then when I put my head down, I really accepted what was going to happen right there because it wasn't nothing else I could do. It really made me upset because at the end, they treated me like a criminal. They handcuffed me. They left me there bleeding. You know, they didn't try to put no pressure on the wound or anything. I'm afraid and angry at the same time. The reason why I say that is because my job asked me to come back. And I flat out told them no. It wasn't because I didn't want to go back and continue doing my job. It's just that I didn't want to get caught in that neighborhood by those police officers. The other thing is that we have like within a two mile radius, there's about six homes there. And every day, every day, the police officer is called to each one of those homes at least twice a day. So my thing is, I don't understand why they don't know that we have these group homes in these areas because you got clients running away all the time. I mean, I just was doing my job, you know. I wonder sometimes, you know, I look back and I ask myself, why, you know, why did I, why did it happen to me? I, you know, I, I still right now to this day don't even really have the answer to that. Um, but I'm here and I'm grateful to be here. So why is the, why did that happen to him? Hopefully next week in the next lesson I'm putting together, I'm going to show you why. Because I've been trying to show people why that don't understand, like, for instance, the nail shop salon thing that happened on 183rd. You know, why are these Asians treating us a certain way? It's right here in the book. And this is the part that Israel does not want to remember. When you go into your carnal state of mind, trying to be like the rest of the world and condemning everybody for what they are doing to us, you're forgetting the spiritual side of why this is happening. And as Israel, as the priest, we're supposed to be showing everybody why this is happening. Not condemning and going off and being mad. And let me just say this. People are going to be mad. There's going to be different levels or whatever. I'm like my pastor now. I ain't mad at nobody. I truly know why this stuff is going on. And I actually feel sorry for these cats that's doing stuff to Israel. But I'm going to still give people forgiveness. But the Lord is the one that knows in their heart if they truly want forgiveness and if they change. I don't know. I'm just supposed to do my job. But why did this happen to this dude? Let's see what happened. Now, this happened years ago, too. It was only, as if I remember, only big in Florida and maybe Georgia. But I saw it, and I didn't see it all, everybody on social media going off about it. Charles Kinsey is lying on the ground, hands in the air. Police are out of sight, pointing their guns. You can hear Kinsey trying to explain he's a healthcare professional. The man on the road next to him is his autistic patient. As long as I got my hands up, they're not going to shoot me. This is what I'm thinking. They're not going to shoot me. Wow, was I wrong? 
Minutes later, after the video ends, police shoot, hitting Kinsey in the leg. And when he hit me, I'm like, I still got my hands in the air. I say, no, I just got shot. And I'm standing there, I'm like, sir, why did you shoot me? And his, ex and his words to me, he said, I don't know. Why did he say, I don't know? Let's go to Isaiah 10, and we're going to start reading at verse 5. This is why this police officer, who is white from another nation, doesn't know why he shot that man in the leg. Isaiah 10, verse 5. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff of their hand is in my indignation. Now, in this verse, he's talking about the Assyrians coming after the northern tribes. But this can also be applied today. I will send him against a hypocritical nation. And against the people of my wrath, I will give him charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Howbeit, he meaneth not also, neither doth his heart think so. The Assyrians used to love to try to conquer everybody, but for some reason they were driven to go after the northern tribes of Israel and they didn't even know why. And the same thing is going on today when it comes to all of us. This is why I can't be mad at the police. This is why I can't be mad at white folks or anybody else. Because the one that's allowing this to happen is the Lord. Because of why? A hypocritical nation. That's why. Let's keep it moving. This happened recently in uh, yeah here in Chicago. So let me uh, let me do this and then I'm gonna start it. I don't want the beginning part to happen. The music of mistaken identity that led to Chicago police shooting and killing a 21 year old man. WGN Investigates reporter Ben Bradley is here with that story, Ben. Micah and Joe, police admit they had the wrong guy. Curtis Stagger was not the suspect they were pursuing in a murder. But his encounter with cops proved fatal, leading to questions about everyone's actions that May afternoon. Oh, there you go right there. When I come home, I just like to relax and listen to my son's music. I be speaking to that money, you would think I'm running late. Grandma hit me on the phone and she had me while I stay. 21 year old Curtis Stagger. He was a nice kid. With big dreams. He said he wanted to buy me a house. With money made from his music. A mother's wish. Yeah, I just want y'all to be safe. I tell them every day, every night. Of all the fears. I never think the Chicago PD would kill my son. Chris. It was the afternoon of May the 28th when police hit the ground running. We'll move up that blue, blue one, all right? Go. They were searching for a suspect wanted in the death of Jalen Elzey, a 15-year-old student gunned down this year in a drive-by. Police had arrested the suspected trigger man, an alleged gang member with a long rap sheet. Now they were closing in on the driver. Stay out of line of sight. Or so they thought. Tell those officers on North End of the Street, get behind some cover. The officer who fired his gun did not wear a body cam. He's in the car, he's in the car. So how the shooting started remains unknown. Guys, which car is he in? Which car are we in? And he's in the red car, he's in a driveway. Audio from this police video captures a tense exchange. And then the crackle of gunfire. They just said, my son raised up, caught his breath, and fell back down. At the hospital. And the doctor came out and told me that Curtis didn't make it. I was hurt, devastated, and it still hurts. Open the door! Open the back door! Rifle, move right. All right, I got gloves. Then came another shot, this one from police. A check of Curtis's fingerprints revealed... They got the wrong guy. Attorney Michael Oppenheimer represents Curtis's mother. This is great. 
He says police were after 20-year-old Tyrese Stagger. And I had like five shots go off. Tyrese was inside the house. And they, they kept screaming like, we got him, we got the suspect. Cops apparently confused Tyrese with his older brother Curtis, who does not have a criminal record. They don't look alike, they simply just shot. Police initially said Curtis Stagger fired the first shot, but they later changed their story to say he didn't shoot at all. Um, as officers went to place that, that suspect into custody, he pulled a gun on the officers. Um, the officers discharged uh, their weapon, striking the uh, suspect. Police say they found this semi-automatic pistol in the car, but the family has questions about where the gun was found. You can see that gun is on the passenger side, kind of under the seat near the passenger door. It makes no sense that this kid had a gun in his hand and after he shot that gun would end up there. On this video, you hear an officer mention a possible second weapon. There's one on the floorboard over there to the right. Dude, I thought I saw it. Black gun too. Hey, he might have another gun on him as well. But police recovered only the one. He shouldn't have been gunned down like that. That's not right. That's not. The family plans to file a federal civil rights lawsuit against police. This family wants answers. They they want justice. They want answers. Their son was wrongfully killed by the Chicago Police Department. As for Tyrese, on May 30th, police issued a warrant for his arrest. In it, they said he was positively identified as the driver in Elsie's murder. Off camera, Tyrese says that's not true. Police eventually nabbed Tyrese, but then... After he was questioned, he was brought into court and the warrant was dismissed. He was never charged. It looks like this all could have been avoided. That's right. Tyrese is free, but two families are left incomplete. And it apparently all started with a case of mistaken identity. Oh, I just want justice for myself. Oh, that's all. Because I can't break. I come back. Every time I brought it in his head, police ain't investigating. They want to see us dead. A police spokesperson says detectives did not push to have Tyrese Stagger charged in the teenager's death because they're awaiting more evidence. That case is still under active investigation. As for the shooting of Curtis Stagger by the officer four months ago, well, it is still being reviewed by the Civilian Office of Police Accountability. How can they sit on it like that? I mean, it's been four months. Well, you'll remember when COPA was created, part of their effort was to speed up the process, right. to give it more transparency so community members could have a better sense mm -hmm. of what went on. COPA has gotten better about releasing video. I mean, Year, yeah. A few years ago, we would have never seen any right. of that. Um, and so it, the process still takes time. And as you can see, uh, there are a lot of questions about this. And for the family, a lot of things yeah. that still haven't been answered. And this is why the Lord said, this, the police department, white folks, it don't matter. They're doing what they're doing. They don't even know why they're doing it. But as we also read in Leviticus 26, they that hate you shall rule over you because of our own sins. See, we keep looking at the media and going carnal when we're supposed to know the spiritual. And I'm speaking directly to spiritual Israel, those that know this book, but then fall into the ways of the world and start condemning everybody just like the rest of the world does. The Lord told us that he was going to make us mad. And a lot of y'all are falling in it. Let's read Deuteronomy 32. Let's get a reminder here. Deuteronomy 32 verse 21. They, who is they? Israel, you. They have moved me to jealousy, which that, which is not of, okay, let me do it again. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. So, as a nation, we have provoked God to anger with nonsense. So what did he say he was going to do to us? And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And the reason I, when I know this in my head, this actually stops me from being angry. The Lord is like, I'm going to make you, he may make me angry another way. But when it comes to these things, 
I'm like, I, I see what the Lord is talking about. I totally see what the Lord is talking about now. And for the brother that mentioned this, everybody angry over this, aren't they? Let's watch. Come on. Tonight, we are seeing the face of a Tatiana Jefferson shot and killed in her home by a Fort Worth police officer early this morning. Now, we know a lot of you have questions about this case, and we have been working all day to find out what we can. This story begins on the south side of Fort Worth on East Allen Avenue. That is where our Eric Alvarez is live tonight to walk us through what happened. Well, friends and family are understandably outraged tonight. They are demanding answers. They are demanding justice for that young woman who was shot and killed here inside her own home by a police officer that was called here to see if she needed help. Put your hands up. Show me your hands. A welfare check gone horribly wrong. In this body cam footage released by the Fort Worth Police Department, you do not hear the officer identify himself as he passes a window and steps through a gate into the backyard. He then sees a figure in a window, draws his gun, and fires, less than three seconds after demanding to see the person's hands. Up, that person is 28-year-old A. Tatiana Jefferson, who lived in the home with her eight-year-old nephew. The family is, is understandably brokenhearted. Attorney Lee Merritt, who spoke to Jefferson's family, says the pair were playing video games early in the morning. And they heard someone creeping around outside. She went to investigate at the window. An officer was on the other side who shouted commands, and before she had a moment to respond, he shot her to death. So how did this happen? Around 2.30 a.m. Saturday, Jefferson's neighbor noticed the door open and the lights on. He called a non-emergency line, asking for police to perform a welfare check. I'm still kind of broken and shocked. James Smith tells WFAA officers parked around the corner, arrived at the house with no lights, no sirens, and did not announce their presence. He called police so they would make sure Jefferson and her nephew were safe. He never expected police to put them in danger. They tell me I shouldn't feel bad, but I feel bad because had I not called the police department, she would probably still be alive today. So I do feel a little weight on me for that making that, making that call. Fort Worth police have not released the name of the officer, but describe him as a white man who has been with the department since April of last year. The officer has been placed on administrative leave. The department says all of the evidence will be handed over to the Put district attorney's up. office to see if any criminal charges will follow. And that is exactly what friends, family, and neighbors are calling for tonight. I can tell you throughout the day, dozens of people have stopped by this house offering support to the family of that young woman, which they say had every right to be in her own home and posed no threat to that officer. Live in Fort Worth, I'm Eric Alvarez. Eric, thank you. Fort Worth Mayor Betsy Price sent out a statement in response to the shooting today, saying writing a statement like this is tragic and something that should never be necessary. A young woman has lost her life, leaving her family in unbelievable grief. All of Fort Worth must surround A. Tatiana Jefferson's family with prayers, love, and support. Chief Krause and his command staff are acting with immediacy and transparency to conduct a complete and thorough investigation. More details are forthcoming, and the Tarrant County District Attorney Law Enforcement Incident Team Office will ultimately receive this case. Thus saith the Lord, Jeremiah 10, verse 21, For death is come up into our windows, and is entered into our palaces, to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. And this is why the nation of Israel, those that know their Israel, knows that those that don't know their Israel, is upset. They're upset at everybody. And the Lord's steady telling us through this whole book, you don't have the right to be upset. You're in a country you believe you're equal in. When he said, this is the land of your enemies, and they will rule over you. And he's telling you, whatever they do, you forgive them. Because I'm forgiving you. But that's not what Israel wants to hear. Israel don't want to hear that. Israel wants to continue to do what Israel wants to do. Let me find this. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 51, and we're going to read 
Isaiah 51, Israel want to do what it wants to do, then it turns around and gets mad when the Lord allows other people to do something to us because we keep sinning. Isaiah 51, verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all streets as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of God. Our sons... When you faint, you have no clue what's going on. It's just like when you go to sleep. And you don't know what's going on until you wake up. They lie at the head of all streets. They on the corners. As a wild bull in the net. Wild bull trying to kill everything. And if it's caught in the net, it's really going off with fury. They are full of the fury of the Lord and the brute of thy God. A lot of stuff be happening to us because of us. Let's read. I mean, let's, let's watch a video. Oh yeah, this is the video I was talking about, I just remembered. So, th there's going to be cussing in here, and there's going to be shooting. If you don't want your children to watch and look, turn them away now. Going towards 7-4. Because we won't keep the commandments. That's us. Out in the streets. 
committing crimes, running from the police, putting other people in in in, in uh, life's their life in danger, and then we turn around and get mad when the police do something to us. If we kept the commandments of God, none of this would be happening. I saw somebody say on the line that we should be mad at our ancestors for this. You're halfway correct. We got to be mad at ourselves too. We can't sit up here and just blame our ancestors. They're the ones that started it. But all this time through each generation, the Lord has been trying to tell everybody within Israel to repent and turn from your ways. And if we all did, this would all stop. But it's not going to stop because because Israel's too deep in this. That's why it ain't going to stop until the Lord comes back. Well, what about the innocent people? What, what about why is the innocent people getting killed? We're not going to read it because I don't have that much time, but you can read ver, uh, Joshua 7. You can read Joshua 6 and 7. One man, when they went into the Jer to the, uh, into uh, Jericho, one man stole a Babylonian garment. He stole a Babylonian garment. And he took some money for himself that was supposed to go in God's treasury. When they came out, he hid it. When they went to war, 35 men died. Because the Lord backed up off the nation of Israel. One person's action sinning against the Lord could have an effect on someone else's life. And I don't really think people see that. It really can. Let's go to Zechariah 1. And we're going to start reading in verse 14. Because there's always hope. Right? Zechariah 1 verse 14. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great jealousy. I am, I mean, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was a, but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. So the Lord got his anger that he's justified over the other nations. He's justified in his anger. Because he's like, I was just a little bit upset with them, but y'all taking it further than that. And he's going to deal with them at the end of days. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. My house shall be built in it, saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth from Jerusalem. Cry yet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, My cities, though prosperity shall yet be spread abroad, and the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, and shall yet choose Jerusalem. That's where our faith has to kick in. Because the Lord's telling us what he's going to do in this book. But do you actually believe it? Or do you want justice now? Do you want to sit back and just say, okay, I, I know this stuff is happening. I'm going to just sit back and let the Lord do what he got to do. And then I'm just going to wait on his, his reward. Or are you going to let the carnal side of you say, no, nah, I want revenge now. I want revenge. Let's go to Proverbs 24. And I want to read this, especially for some of my brothers and sisters, for a situation that happened last week. Proverbs 24, verse 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. So when your enemies fall, and I see this with other Hebrew camps, when somebody gets caught up in something, everybody's like, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord took them evil devils down. Lord said not to rejoice when you see that, but also when it happens within Israel. If one of your brothers and sisters have been treating you wrong, 
and you've prayed and said, I, Lord, please, please get this guy to change or whatever. And they change. Yeah, you should rejoice in that. But if they don't and they fall, rejoice not when thine enemy falleth or let not your heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it and it displease him. And he turn away his wrath from him. You don't want that to happen. Somebody been vexing you for the longest and they finally, you know, you ain't got to deal with their vexation and you sitting up here, hallelujah, especially if, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go in private and I'm going to be like, thank you, Lord. But I'm not going to rejoice in front of people because it's going. the Lord is like, I don't want to see that. I did what you wanted me to do. Just thank me for it. But don't be out there celebrating with the rest of the world. Let's go to, where did I just go to? Matthew 5. Yeah, Matthew 5. And we're going to read verse 19 and 20. Who's, whoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoso shall do and teach them shall be, shall, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So if you're not teaching the commandments of God, you'll be in the lake of fire. It's that simple. If you're teaching the commandments of God, you'll be in the kingdom of heaven. However, let's keep reading. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Do you guys understand that the scribes and the Pharisees knew the law too, and they taught the law. But what was missing? There was something missing from them. Let's go to Galatians 5. There was something else that was missing. They knew the law. They could hit it real quick. They throw scriptures on you back and forth. But there was something missing. And we're going to read what that was. Galatians 5. And we're going to start reading. Oh, I'm in Ephesians. Galatians 5. And we're going to start reading at verse 22. Galatians 5 and 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. If you don't have the law and the testimony, if you don't have commandments of God and the faith of Jesus which is the fruits of the spirit you're not exceeding the Pharisees Israel you're literally the Pharisees so again if they hate and you hate what sets you apart I like to thank everybody for tuning in Please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to load this up to YouTube a little bit later. Um, what else? Happy Sabbath. All glory to the Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, who's blessed forevermore. Y'all have a good one. Share like the video. In Jesus' name. Wake up, 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 wake